Hi everyone, welcome back. It's been a while, but going forward, we'll try to upload more often. Okay, in the first two videos, we discussed the memory map of the system, including the legacy memory range. And in this video, we'll look into the overall BIOS boot flow at a high level. We'll do this from a hardware perspective. In other words, we'll try to first understand how the hardware behaves and how to initialize it for boot. Okay. We are not going to talk about the software structures or code bases such as UEFI based implementation like Tiano or other open source implementations such as core boot etc at this point. Later on, once we understand what the hardware expects, then we can look at an overview of the UEFI based implementation. Okay. So in the previous video, we saw that the BIOS starts at the reset vector at FFF0. But this is for the 16-bit mode for the older processors. But for 32-bit and 64-bit processors, or today's processors, the entry point, the reset vector is here at 4 gig. Okay. So the entry point would be at FF, 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 F0. So this will be the reset vector. So when the power is applied and the processor starts fetching code, it will start fetching at increasing addresses until there is a jump or a branch instruction. Which means that we need to jump out of this location before we hit all Fs. Now, where do we jump off or branch off? Depends on the BIOS implementation. In legacy BIOS, we do a for jump to the legacy reset vector. So from, from here, do a for jump to here at this point. This is where the legacy reset vector is. Since at power up, the F and D segments at 1 MB are aliased to those at 4 gig. Let's not dwell too much into this since most of the industry has transitioned out of using 16-bit BIOS. Okay. In today's implementation, the BIOS switches to 32-bit mode and continues execution at the 4 gig area. Okay, so what does the BIOS do after reset? Let's look at a sequence of steps that it does at a very high level and later on we'll drill into each one of those in detail. It switches to 32-bit mode because we are executing at the 4 gig location which requires 32-bit code. Then it locates and loads the U-code patch. What it means is that the BIOS will carry some microcode patches which it will load into the processor during boot if required. Then it will set up caches RAM and until this point we are executing out of flash region and we will not be able to use any memory data structures. We can't use stack, we can't use variables. So it's going to be a stackless code until this point. We have to execute stackless until we have memory or we have some form of memory. What we do here is basically use the cache in the processor and make it look like memory for us for some time until we execute and get to the point where we have actual memory. Once we have car, we can switch to C code. Then the BIOS identifies the platform information like you know what kind of platform you're running on based on some platform ID jumpers that you can read or also get user inputs from the BIOS setup options as to what the user wants some of the options to be. And then it passes those information to the silicon init module. Now the silicon init module is a vendor proprietary code. It typically consists of initializing memory and in a multiprocessor system it also involves setting up the interconnect between processors. Okay, so if you have four socket system how do you set up the interconnect between the processors? How do you route the traffic between them? So those things will also be done at this point. Now, once step five is complete, the basic silicon functionality has been initialized. Okay, memory is available and there's no point in still using cache as memory. So we tear down car and use main memory. Then we wake up all the CPU cores in the system 
and initialize them. Now, typically only one core or one thread comes out of reset. In a multi-processor system, let's say we have four sockets in a high-end server system, there will be one thread coming out of each socket. So there will be four threads running. We'll talk about how that's handled in, in later sessions, but basically we need to go ahead and wake up all the cores and initialize them. So there is a mechanism to go and send a command and wake up all the all the cores and let them go to a known location memory and initialize them. At this point, we also set up system management mode. We, we touched upon SMRAM in the previous two videos and this is where we set it up. Then the BIOS does a PCI bus enumeration and resource allocation. It goes and walks the PC hierarchy to find out what bridges or switches are there and uh, looks for endpoint devices, finds out the MMIO requirements or any resource requirements and allocates them. Yeah. While you are doing PC enumeration, if you find option ROMs, then the BIOS will go and launch the option ROMs. Set up power management. Set up OS interface tables such as ACPI, mainly used for exposing the platform capabilities to the operating system and also contain some ASL code for the OS to interface with the platform in runtime. We all set up memory map structures, so OS knows which areas are reserved, which, which can be used by the operating system. And then you also pass some SMB structures which expose information about the hardware. Okay, And you launch the BIOS setup if invoked. So, you know, you press F2 key at some point in the boot process or some other hotkey which will launch the BIOS setup. And then you go ahead and launch the operating system. In the next video, we'll go ahead and expand each one of these and see them in much more detail. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.